So back in the Royal TV studio now, and I've got Rhys Griffiths from Deer Industry New Zealand. Welcome along, Rhys. G'day. Nice to, nice to meet you, Tony. Yeah. Now, would you like to just explain your role there, please, Rhys? I'm, uh, I'm Deer Industry New Zealand's Velvet Marketing Services Manager. I've been in the role for about six years now. It's kind of a cool role because it's got quite a uh, focus on our Asian markets. Yeah. Uh, and the reason, the reason why is, is the Asian markets are really understanding of Velvet in terms of health properties. So you walk down the street in, in say, Johnsonville or in Auckland or in Sydney, any, anywhere else in the sort of Western world, and you ask, what's Velvet? And most people think it's the fluffy stuff on the outside of, um, of staghorns. Yeah. Um, and most people won't know what it's really used for in the, in the traditional markets um, or in the traditional sense or functional sense, really. You walk down in, in, in Dainan and in, in Taiwan or, or Daejeong in, in Korea or, um, uh, or in Dali in, in, um, in China and you ask what Nogyong or, or Lurong, you know, the terms for velvet are, and people often uh, will often know what it is for. So, yeah, they understand it's important. It's ingredient. a household name. Yeah, yeah. Well, velvet is a, it's a household ingredient. So they, they will understand that it's used for, um, for traditional medicine or a um, uh, good, good source of yang. They will quite often understand that it's really good for immune function coming into winter. Um, uh, quite often they'll associate with it. So they'll say, oh, my, my father, my grandfather, my uncle. Uh, uses velvet, and um, and so there's that really good knowledge about it. And we all know in New Zealand, China's a big buzz, you know. Yeah. Um, we all know that they're growing in their wealth. Uh, South Korea are doing uh, very well as well. So um, so they're increasing their economic wealth. They haven't been as badly affected by the GFC as say our European markets and what have you. So that's what makes them a role kind of interesting really. Yeah, mm. now some good news for Alliance. Yeah, so, um, so last week or the week before, uh, the Chinese regulators AQSIQ uh, listed uh, the two Chinese uh, two alliance plants that uh, they slaughter slaughter venison. So uh, so we'll see improved access over time once uh, once the appropriate health suits and what have you um, are available from MPI. So it's been some good work there on on, uh, on both sides really to um, to make that to make that happen. Yeah. Mm. And what about other countries? Um, so uh, we do our third biggest export market will be the US. Um, I showed a, a wee clip in there, six, uh, you know, um, uh, sixty minute clip based up, based upon New Zealand velvet going into um, into America. It seems to have a following among athletes, high perform, you know, high performance athletes, um, and, it, and it's tracking along okay. But but really our core markets are South Korea. Um, China and Taiwan. Yeah. Mm. Now, after that article came out that you showed mm. uh, in the presentation, yeah. uh, a massive spike. Yeah, it did. So we um, we increased our exports there <coughs> last year from about four hundred thousand to about three quarters of a million dollars. So it was off a low base, and it's still not. You know, when you look at our industry and we say, well, we export about thirty million dollars worth of velvet, it's still small. But it, it, it was kind of nice to see what you know exposure sort of can do to the market, really. Yeah. Mm. Now over here, the beer farmers. Are they more getting into the velvet? Um, anecdotally, you know, just around this conference, I'm um, I'm having a chat with the odd one, and they, they seem they seem cautiously optimistic about um, about the future of velvet. Now we have to be very mindful that we don't want a flood of people getting into the market, uh, getting into producing velvet, because you know that could end up causing an oversupply. Um, but but good steady managed growth, I think, would be the key. So we talked about this five years ago in terms of um, the direction we need to go as a velvet industry. Prices have been really relatively stable now for five years and we've seen those two years of good better than inflationary adjustments in terms of prices that farmers are getting and that's important but that needs to maintain and me making sure that we can sustain that means we need managed growth we don't need a spike if we have a spike then um, uh, then prices could come back so um, you know over the long term yeah so nice managed growth is the way we need to approach the industry yeah, and I don't suppose it's something that somebody could just jump on the bandwagon straight away if it came right in a hurry, you know? It's a no, what, what I'd like to see is those, those dedicated velvet farmers that have been um, been in the business now for, for a while. I, I'd like to see them um, <clears throat> uh, maybe, ex you know, if, if they feel that they should expand their herd, that, that's where the growth could come from. Yeah. Um, we'll get natural growth because velvet is highly heritable and, um, and the weight, weights appear to be um, uh, increasing most years. Uh, and you know some of the venison guys may be looking at a bit of um, a bit of augmentation to their, their businesses. Uh, so that that's it'd be nice to sort of see that stay within the in the yeah. deer industry. I guess so. I, I don't see a lot of big conversions into 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 the velvet industry, for example. No. Mm. Now, as, as far as production goes, uh, we right at the top of the game. Can anyone grow velvet like we can? Um, we can grow. 
We, we grow velvet in a way that the, particularly in, in South Korea, um, the South Korean orientomedical doctors really like. So, uh, so when we look at competing countries, uh, we look at their farming systems, and their farming systems are very intensive. So they'll farm quite often in a small paddock, uh, not, not a paddock, in a concrete pen. They might have 20 stags and they feed them imported, uh, imported feed. So there's a cost associated with that, and the, and the, um, and the rising uh, wages you know, uh, are adding real pressure into, into the dynamics of their farming system. The Korean orientomedicine medicine doctor, when they come out to New Zealand and they have a look at, um, you know, Central Otago and amazing places like that, which are really good deer sort of hubs, yeah. uh, they can see that, that we grow velvet uh, so close to the natural way that it's been uh, grown centuries before. And, that, and um, with traditional orientomedicine, medicine, it is a lot about um, uh, how things are presented in the most natural way. The other thing they also like is they like um, the strict quality control systems that we have. So right, um, right through, right to the removal of velvet, um, <clears throat> and the way that they sort of managed through to the market as well as, as a food. Competing countries probably don't do that as much. Um, so, uh, so that's why we're seeing a bit of a spike, in, um, in the use of velvet going in as an orange, uh, sorry, going in as a healthy food ingredient, uh, with these large companies particularly based in Korea, as they, as they are sort of looking at the, at the next thing. They want to borrow our clean, green image. They certainly do, and, and it certainly worked well. Look, um, I think uh, when I speak with the Koreans, uh, some of the big, biggest, best marketing I think New Zealand's done is the likes of Peter Jackson when, uh, with The Lord of the Rings, you know, Koreans yeah. watch a lot of movies. Uh, without a doubt, it's been, um, it's been a big thing. So we've tried to capitalise on the New Zealand Inc. side of things, and there's been a lot of good work by a lot of, um, a lot of uh, industries out there on that. So all we've done is try and capitalise that, turn it into a New Zealand Velvet story. When people want to come to New Zealand, uh, we suggest we meet up with them in Queenstown, we'll show them a, a nice couple of farms, and they can really get that pretty instantly. Yeah. Mm. Any, any big trips for yourself coming up over there? Um, no, look, I, I went over a couple of months ago. Uh, we've, got, we've got a couple of big key projects on around that sort of healthy food side of things um, in uh, South Korea, and, and, uh, and we're trying to work closer with the, um, uh, with the Chinese Deer Farmers Association. Yeah. So we had, a, we had a, a good meeting there a couple of months ago, and I'll, I'll probably go back again in October, uh, depending on uh, what, what the market need is. Uh, but just to, just to sort of put that healthy food side of things into perspective, so about 10 years ago, uh, probably about 1% of New Zealand's velvet was going to the healthy food. About 85% of New Zealand's velvet was going to the traditional oriental medicine. Yeah. Today that landscape's changed immensely. Probably about half of our velvet into the traditional oriental medicine, and possibly about a good 20% of New Zealand's velvet now going to the healthy food. One company alone attributes about 8% of New Zealand Velvet's production, and they take New Zealand, New Zealand Velvet, they put a small amount into a, into a sachet, and they, the um, sales on that product was about 75 million US last year. So that's where the growth is gonna come. Sounds good, and it sounds like you guys are doing a great job. Oh, it's, it's good, but there's a lot of work ahead, you know? Um, so there's, there's uh, risk factors that we've gotta be aware of. So one of the key things that I've gotta really hammer home to anyone watching this, um, is to make sure you retain a good loyalty with your with your buyer, yeah. um, and make sure that we've got that product stewardship going through. So, how is the velvet that you take time in and, um, and, and producing that you got a lot of pride in producing? How is that represented into the market? We don't want to see anything mixed. We want to get some real good country of origin sort of stuff happening, and 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 um, and, and that that comes down to product stewardship. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much, Reese. Yeah, no worries at all. Yeah, good to see you. Awesome. Thank Cheers. you.